Last one, play the game of life for doing 10 minutes speech. <laughs> Good luck. Good afternoon. I told those signs up there for good luck. Um, mahalo and mahalo kanu and for KCC and all of you that are here tonight to um, just to partake in this, what I really believe is a movement. And is this sound okay? You guys can hear? Good. Um, Kauhale, really quickly, is um, kind of a merger between Mao Organic Farms, Sea Water Productions, and Makao Studios. And now this is a presentation that I used to show that talked about the merger, but I'm just going to use it as a skeleton to highlight you know, what we're doing specifically in the food system through Mao. Um, and I have up there, I love to start with this term, Onipa'a. Um, onipa'a was the term that the queen used, and it was the model to hold fast. And we believe then that we are taking this notion of, we are standing on the shoulders of all the activists that came forth and did all this aina based activism to preserve our land, to preserve all the resources, and using it in a way to then shift weight and then move forward. Because only pa means to stay firm, only is to move pa is stop. But only pa also can mean if you move forward unstoppably. And if you know any martial arts, you know that you need to move back and then shift weight at the right moment. And I think the things that we were holding in that activism to preserve the land are going to be the things that we shift the weight on and move forward unstoppably. Um, and really, really quickly to just, and I'll say what highlight what others said before me, the root of food security is an economic justice and cultural restoration, period. Absolutely period. It strays from that, you look for other sources, you will create a new form of classism, which will continue to haunt us. And you cannot escape from that fact. And that's something I just really hope on. Um, but I, I really wanted just to, to push forward to the next time. I'll do this. <laughs> and I'm suffering from... Okay. Well, here, you see, you, you, you see the challenges of our community, because we're located in the community of one another. And you can go on and on and on about the challenges. One of the things I really believe that all of these challenges, all these negative demographics are learned behavior. Our kupuna were not dysfunctional. And the root of this dysfunction came when we took us out of our natural context, was relationships with the land. You cannot cure crystal, crystal methamphetamine by creating better meth labs, meth clinics to get them through, nor can you conserve our environment by practicing forest conservationism. You have to return us to a symbiosis where we live together in these resources for thousands of years with no import. So I really believe that this is the challenges, but to community is always an opportunity because we realize that on the bottom, 50% of our community are youth and 60% of our Native Hawaiians. So we have this bastion that's ready to be, to, to be you know, harnessed and used. So how we responded, you know, you can see the other organizations, Sea Rider, Maka Studios, well, Kahali represents the response. So the response is Ma'o Farms. Um, Ma'o is uh, a not-for-profit that's designed to generate revenue. Um, this is a social enterprise, if you will. The enterprise part of our farm is a 24-acre fully certified organic farm in the community of Waianai. Um, we grow about 35 to 45 different types of produce. Many of them, things people say they couldn't, couldn't be grown in Waianai. We like to see ourselves as an eloquent little finger to a narrative of them. Um, and we sell to three specific, with three general general um, groups of people. We first and foremost to our chefs, Ed Kenny, um, Gucci. All these people have Ed bought the first radish we do. And we would not be able to do what we do without our co-producers, because this is a movement. Second would be to our retail space, Whole Foods, which is wonderful. They, you know, they sell our stuff and they help to. We're now growing um, produce, so we're growing greens that uh, are selling to town and bring the money back into Hawaii in a new context, but we kind of used to do it. But, um, and it's through Whole Foods that we get that mass amount of greens being sold and green coming back in. And the third is through direct sales um, through farmers markets, KCC, Almoana, and Waianai, as well as our direct sales and our um, subscription boxes. That is, you know, the for-profit side. We're doing about five hundred thousand dollars a year. And, you know, we're about one of the largest organic farms on Oahu. Um, what makes us unique, though, is that our farm is entirely run by young adults from our community. We have an internship called the Youth Leadership Training, the YLT, where we recruit why, um, the prerequisites. You have to be age, age 17 and 24, have graduated from high school, and live on the Waianae coast. You get in, you have to commit for three years, you get your associates. 
we uh, expect 20 hours a week of, of work, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays from 5 in the morning till noon. Um, sometimes, I mean, the longer you're in, the earlier you start. You start at 7 and you finish your ending, you're starting at 5. Exchange for the sweat equity, you provide a full tuition waiver to Leeward Community College, $500 a month starting stipend. And uh, an individual development account, a bank account, where you match two to one, whatever they save, to a cap of $3,000. We are currently sending 41 young adults from Wine and College as organic farmers. Most of them are the first in their family. Most of them are the first in their family to go to college, and most of them are from families where the $500 a month stipend makes them major wage earners in the household. Um, how we were able to do this? Restructured as a social enterprise, and this is how we're growing farms and farmers concurrently. As a, as a nonprofit that generates revenue, we can get revenue from grants and we get revenues that we generate ourselves. And this, this general overview of whose responsibility is executive director, da 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 da. But, this is killing me. Um, we are powered by the interns. We call this the entrepreneurial space where interns generate revenue for the enterprise while being empowered by the mission. And the more they hit, the more of them we said they're getting to college, they're getting a 2.0s at least and everything else, the more it's proving that it can work, so the more funding we get. Meanwhile, they're being taught how to be absolutely excellent in farming. Aside from farm manager Gary, our farm is run by interns. We don't hire farmers, we hire college interns. The oldest is 24. We've single-handedly skewed the age of farmers in, in local demographics. A small, you have this little outlier of a bubble, but it's going to grow because they generate the revenue that keeps enterprise going. And this is called the entrepreneurial space. It spins the organization, it keeps it moving, and this keeps us alive. This keeps we have we've been expanding during a recession, but the ultimate investment is in community. When you start to think about what's the implications of more young adults and more going to college. What's the implications of ag land being used for ag instead of dumps, live fire training, everything else that happens to be in Wayne? And what's the implications of us rebranding ourselves as a center of food production of the people, as opposed to that's where you don't want to park, but that's where you see yourself in the first five minutes of the newscast. So that's the ultimate change that's being designed to sustain itself through this enterprise model. Some key concepts that we're focused on is Aina based sustainability. The challenges of peak oil have been spoken to over and over again. And the sustainability model that some people speak of, uh, you know, we'll just, you know, just grow one thing indefinitely and we'll be able to sustain the economy. Like, for example, we'll be sustainable by growing GMO. <coughs> uh, I'll name names if you want me to. But, um, <laughs> The challenge is, is that it's all based on cheap oil, and when that dries up, we cannot, just in this industrial ag model, we've seen fail us before, we've pulled out. If you're in an abusive relationship, when you go back into it, it's your fault. You have to read the writing on the wall and understand. We have to sustain ourselves. The opportunity there is to see traditional epistemologies as a science of sustainability that allowed us to live on islands for 3,000 years. pre Hawaiians, the Asian Samoans, we were living on islands with no imports. So the, sustain, the, the goal is to sustain Aina. Aina does not mean land. Aina means that which feeds. It's a whole system. It's a verb. So that's what we're looking on, how we sustain all of these things. And we can look to our ancestral practices as the science and the precedent to put into a 21st century context. Konakonomics. <coughs> Hawaiian is now synonymous with poverty. Loss of land and connection means we're less rural Hawaiians and more poor Americans. Tupac means more to our kids than you do. And that is painful. But it happens that way because we lost connection to land, which was the most important thing we could have. <clears throat> Therefore, lack of economic opportunity makes us complicit in our own demise. So you just go through the opportunities will favor those who have the best paradigm, and the goal is impoverished communities will be the ones that will take the lead. And finally, academics. For generations, we have been poorly performing in schools, if you put me in a classroom, I've performed poorly. I dropped out of high school and I had to get my master's later. We create these immersive spaces where you can contextualize all of these things that's entrepreneurial and everything else. They will learn. And you create pracademics, people that have the ability to learn with their hands and their brain, calluses on your hands and brains, that will be leaders, they're being told to be leaders. So they'll be the people that are making these decisions for us on behalf of our food systems, 
who had worked the farm in our college years. I went on too long, so I'm cutting here. This gives a general gist of it, but mahalo for your time. Allah.